Hello, I'm Susan Peralt, Vice President of Programs at Business Impact Northwest, and welcome to Washington BizFair Pricing and Packaging Services to Maximize Revenue. Business Impact Northwest is a community development financial institution. That means that we offer coaching classes and capital for underserved entrepreneurs. We serve Washington, Oregon, Idaho, and Alaska. How we help? Well, we can help you launch and grow your business with free one-on-one -on -one business coaching, um, in-person and um, virtual training, networking events, loan readiness. We are a flexible and compassionate nonprofit lender offering startup capital, growth capital, and lines of credit. Our current program centers include the Veterans Business Outreach Center, providing training and financing opportunities to entrepreneurs and the military-connected community, the Washington Women's Business Center and Alaska Women's Business Center, providing training and financing opportunities to female entrepreneurs. Loan Readiness Center, where we can help you get loan ready, no matter what, what financial institution you're working with. And the Food Business Resource Center, providing training, coaching and resources and connections to food business entrepreneurs. Ah, small biz comeback. Wow. The last two years, um, when you think about the external factors that were beyond your control as a business owner, so many. Um, you adapted your business model. You may have adapted the services that you're offering to meet the needs of the current situation. Um, you really had to identify how you fit into the marketplace. And I want to just congratulate you for still being here. So as a business owner, you understand what it costs to provide your service. This is probably one of the easiest things that you can do. You know what materials you need, you know the, what the labor costs are, you know what your profit needs are. Um, and so, and you understand what your capacity is. So, but when we think about pricing models for service businesses, we really want to make sure that we are focusing on value, the value that's in the mind of the customer. And so, as it says here, you don't get paid for the hour, you get paid for the value you bring to the hour. So what we really want to do is really start focusing on what is the value to your customer in their mind. And then part of that is really understanding um, what their needs are, how price sensitive the um, service is, um, the problems that they have with existing um, services, and then really trying to position to them how you are gonna meet their desired outcomes, meet their needs, and really answer that question, why you, when they're taught, when they select a service provider. So when we're looking at pricing models for service businesses, it can be difficult to estimate costs for some service businesses. In some cases, service businesses such as childcare or catering will have significant costs to consider. In other business types of businesses, the um, owners, the biggest expense is your time, such as consulting or freelancing. Service businesses must focus on a pricing strategy. Um, and what we're going to do is just really look at some of the basic um, pricing models that are that you might be using right now. So one is hourly rate. Um, and before we look at these um, types of models, keep in mind that there are certain pricing models for services which are which are the norm for an industry, which could be how you selected your pricing model. So looking at hourly rate, you inform the customer how many hours, what your rate is and how many hours, you know, and then you're going to track the number of hours and that becomes the cost of the service to the customer. Cost plus hourly rate. Um, you're going to have um, the customer pay the cost for the materials that are used for the service and then you charge the hourly rate and that combined becomes the, what you're char charging for your service. Um, when you look at a project or job rate, 
This is where you set a fee to do a job, regardless to the amount of time it takes to complete it. Um, this can be a little tricky because one thing that things one of the things that can be really difficult is the fact is you must really be able to define exactly what you're delivering for that rate and really understand how long it's going to take to deliver that service so that you can be profitable. And we don't have what we call mission creep where you keep adding more and more and more to the job, the project, but not charging for that. And we have an estimate. So you propose a total cost for a job and then you keep track of the hours. You're generally gonna have benchmarks or you're gonna provide um, updates so that the client understands where, they, where you are in that process. Um, and then we have what we're gonna really focus on today, which is called valued base, which is all about the value. What value does your service have to the customer? So when we look at value-based pricing or fees, so what we really want to focus on first of, is your competitive advantage. So this is really where you want to start defining what value is to the customer and um, focus on why the customer is servicing, is looking for the service. So based on your competitive advantage. So look at your value proposition. What makes you stand out? Um, when you think about value proposition, you, this is the innovation service or feature intended to make a company or product attract customers and really make you stand out from the competition. So one of the main goals is that um, we really want to look at um, how to better align the fees and pricing with the value perceived. We're going to look at, we don't want to focus on tasks or the steps that you take to perform, that you perform the service. We want to focus on outcome and results. Really, it's all about buyer self-interest. Why? What is important to your customer? So, what are their needs? You want to take the focus away from pricing and really looking out why. Why are they coming to you? What are their needs? Um, what will you provide? What does your service provide that's of value to them? So when you're looking at buyer self-interest, a couple of examples are for organizations, maybe your what you provide will give them, they'll end up with higher sales, better um, retention of employees. Um, and you, maybe you're gonna improve their, their image or their brand image. Um, for personal services, maybe what you're gonna offer, you, what you offer to them in the end is really something that's gonna be less stressful, um, better use of their time, and maybe you're gonna improve that value in their life. So really it's all about establishing value with the client. So you truly have to understand what your client is looking for and how you are going to establish value with your client. So when we talk about focusing on outcome and results, we really want to think about what the, you are providing to the client, where the true value lies. So we're gonna set fees primarily perceived on value to the customer. And so these are a few examples. So let's say that you are a consultant and you are a trainer and you offer sales training sessions. And so that's wonderful. I mean, you can describe all the things you're gonna do, all the information you're going to provide. However, what the, your client truly needs, truly wants, and the reason they're coming to you is that they need to improve sales closing rates. They may have lots of sales leads. Their sales rate closing rate is lower. That means their revenues are down. So if you can improve, if you can train their sales consultants so that they are going to close more sales, that is going to be more revenue, more profit to the customer. So that's what that training is really delivering. It's the value to the customers. You're going to increase my sales, increase my bottom line, and maybe make me look great to my, uh, you know, if I'm not the owner, you're gonna make it look great to my supervisor. 
um, you, you redesign performance evaluation. So again, you go in, you look at performance evaluations for a company and you redesign them so that, that you're, they're truly understanding how their employees are performing. The reason that someone would hire you for this could be because they're, they're having high turnover. And right now we know that they're really, you know, unemployment numbers are really low. So, you know, getting those valuable employees and keeping them employee retention is really important. And so for this customer, if you can decrease their turnover employees, meaning increase retention of new hires, that means they save all those costs of um, job search, uh, I should say of job uh, recruiting and interviewing and onboarding and training. And every time that someone leaves, they start this cycle over again. And so it's really important that if you can, again, lower that, all those costs of doing business, you're saving that customer. There's the value. And then um, maybe what you do is study technological needs of a service for service per personnel, which means a company's having really poor response times. Maybe the technology they're using isn't working. And we all know, especially after you know, the start of the pandemic, technology is so crucial to communicating with both clients and staff. So let's say you have a fleet of um, uh, HVAC um, service consultants, uh, service uh, providers. And you need to know that if you improve the response time of each of those employees when they're out doing an HVAC call, that means you can serve more clients, you'll have more satisfied clients. So both of those things are going to increase revenue for you. So again, it's all about, you're gonna be lowering that cost per um, service call by employee because they'll be doing more. And you're gonna increase client satisfaction, which hopefully gives you referrals, which again feeds your pipeline for more clients. So really stop and think about what you are offering, what your service is, and then what does it really mean to the customer? What is the value to the customer? And so in doing this, we really need to understand what is value. So think about the psychological um, aspects to when someone is hiring you for that service, what is the value to them? And it's really important that you understand from your clients and think about those clients that are very loyal to you and what it, why there, there is that loyalty. And when you're doing that, you can really start to drill down on what is the value to your service in your customer's mind. So the next step is to establishing value with the buyer. So maybe the buyer isn't really thinking about, you know, what, why, you know, what the value is to them. They just know that they want it. So at this point, think about establishing the value to the buyer. And so part of that is asking a question if you're trying to establish value. So. You may be talking to that person who ha has employee uh, turnover and go, what if you did nothing? What if, you know, what would the impact be? Oh boy, if I, if I don't um, decrease the, uh, the turnover rates for employees or incre increase retention, then I'm going to have these higher costs of recruiting and onboarding and training, and then they're going to leave and I have to start this over again and maybe you know, my existing employees have to pick up the slack. So think, so that's one question you can ask an a potential client as you want to establish value in, the, in their mind. Um, what will you be able to do that you can't do now? So is there something that if you, if you have this service, will it enable you to do something that you can't do now? What will the effect on revenues, sales, profits, et cetera? And that's where you can really get them to start thinking about the, wow, if I hire you to do this service, what is the outcome to me? What is it going to help? How is it going to help me um, be more profitable if I'm, if it's this business to business? Um, if you're looking at um, 
someone where you're going to be uh, hopefully getting to, to do an entire project. Um, think about the, you know, maybe what are the three greatest impacts of the result of this on project success? If we did this, what would be the three biggest impacts? If you did do this and then get them start thinking about the value. Um, this is where, what will your boss's reaction be to this success? Well, if you're the, uh, if you're talking to a business owner, that one probably won't work, but maybe they do need to impress someone and they want to really demonstrate their value to the cost, to their company. And then, um, you can look, what would it mean to you personally? So these are really, these are just ways that you can start to establish value to the customer. So they start thinking about not the service, but the outcome. What, how is it valuable to them? And then the next step is really you're establishing your unique values. So this is where you really want to set yourself apart. We talked about value proposition or your secret sauce. What makes you stand out? Well, how, establish yourself as the expert. Really try communicate how you have already successfully handled very similar problems with success. And you also want to really ensure your client is aware of your full range of services as well. So let them know that not only are you an expert, but you can, they don't need to look elsewhere. You are, you can provide full service. You can fill every need for this project. They don't need to go elsewhere. So um, it's really just important that it's all about setting yourself apart. So what is your competency? What is your position in the community? How are you perceived? What are you known for? What are, you know? What are what is a, what are the services that you just know that when people think of you, they know this is what you're known for. Um, what is your promise? How are you making a, a emotional connection with your clients? And then really make yourself memorable. And some of you can probably think of some some people who are who promote themselves or market themselves, and they do it in a way that makes it that it is memorable for you. So think about the things that they're doing that make makes them memorable and think about the things that you can do to make yourself memorable. It's really important that you see where you fit into the um, competition as well. And so when you're thinking about this, it's all about, again, we want to make ourselves stand out. What makes us special? What makes us different? And so think about not only your direct competition, the people who offer a similar service. And if you say, well, you know, I, I'm really unique. I really don't have any competition. Well, think of it this way. If someone has a problem or they have a need for your service, they're doing something right now. Maybe they're not, maybe they're just ignoring it and leaving it alone, however, but chances are they are doing something. So if that's the case, then, what you want to think about is, so who are they giving the money to now? They're hiring somebody, perhaps. You know, maybe they're not. Maybe they're just staying still and not doing anything. However, chances are they're doing something. They may not be satisfied with it right now, but they're doing something. So those are your direct competition. They offer similar services. So in this case, we're looking at, you know, Seattle wedding photographers. So see who your competition is, their direct competition. Then think about if they don't hire you for their wedding photography, what are the substitutes? Maybe they don't have any pictures. They have family. Everyone's got a phone now. You know, maybe family and friends. They act as um, a photographer. Every, all the guests are. Um, how likely is that to happen versus not hiring? You know, hiring you. And then the next would be um, how do you differentiate yourself? Why you? What is your specialty? What is your experience? Um, what is how, you know, what are your referrals? Like if you think about your social media presence and referrals, what packages and pricing do you offer? What extra services do you offer? So the more exclusive you are, your service, the fewer competitors you have, but you will have competitors. So it's really under, it's really important to really differentiate yourself. And so how can you do this? 
um, you can focus on a very niche market. So it's just a very specialized area of, a, of that service that you're providing. Um, you can look at um, having a really strong guarantee that you know no one else in the industry would dream of doing it. Could be a little scary, but you know perhaps that um, package an outcome. And we're gonna that's the next part of this presentation is how to package yourself so it makes it so you just are a one stop shop for them. Um, maybe do something unexpected. Um, offer a you know an offer they can't refuse. Here's one for a tax prep clients get feedback with referrals, 100% refund tax guys. And so really think about how you differentiate yourself. And one that I think is really important is also, I like the resolve of fear. What is the thing that um, they, maybe you have a product or service that they are not necessarily something they know they need. However, you are going to be the solution that takes away whatever fear they might have or uncertainty. So make yourself stand out. So when you're thinking about bringing clients on to value-based pricing, the first thing that we want to look at is not trying to convince your current customer. And so the reason I say that is because with value price based um, pricing, what you're doing is saying, and an example would be, you are a bookkeeper. You are offering bookkeeping services. And maybe you specialize on um, working with people who are in the um, pet grooming industry or whatever industry that would be. So you already know that because you understand your industry, that the average pet groomer charges $90 an hour for grooming. So when you're talking to that business owner and you're building that value in their mind, you can look at it this way. You can approach them with how many hours do you currently spend every week or every month on bookkeeping for your business? And in doing that, what they, they may say, well, I spend seven hours a month or I spend two hours a week. So let's say it's two hours a week. So that's eight hours a month. In eight hours, how many, how much revenue can you generate? Boy, at $90 an hour, boy, times eight, that's a nice in increase to their income. So when you do that, you are already starting to, that's the value that you're creating for your client. That's the value in their mind. So for your existing clients, you may not want to try to convince your existing clients. You've already got a certain rate that you're charging for your service. And so what you want to do is this is really about prospecting for new clients. If you're going to raise your rates, and we're going to talk about that in just a little bit, to it's more aligned to the value, not what it costs to perform the service, but what the value is in the customer's mind, then that's what you want to start working with your prospecting new clients instead of trying to convince your existing clients. Um, you want to define what the ideal client will look like. What is their budget? Um, what do they value? And you want to make sure you're aligned in, with that. And then um, you want to target high value ideal customers and filter out anyone who else is not. So when you think about this, um, you want to prove, you may need to prove your value to someone as you're starting to bring them on. So if you're bringing clients on with VPBP, so you want to be able to um, pr prove your value, which means maybe you, if it's a project or a small a service that you can carve out a little bit, just begin with a small deal in that area that they're unhappy and over deliver. So maybe there's a little bit of a project that you can carve out and you can prove to them that you are the real deal. You are the expert, you are worth the change. Um, you really want to concentrate on the value you provide. Again, what is the value? We don't want to talk price. You want to talk about value. What is the value to them? And especially if you can carve it out into dollars, where it's like I can 
groom, um, you know, I have an additional, um, you know, income because I can groom more dogs. So I'm not doing bookkeeping. Let's face it. The only people who make money doing bookkeeping are bookkeepers and accountants. If you're running a business, that's not where your money's, you know, you're not generating income. Um, and then continue to over deliver. You want it and be memorable. So you want to just knock it out of the park. And you want them to be met. You want to be memorable, but in a in a good way. And then keep increasing your pricing or fee as you improve and deliver more value. The more value you have to the cut to that um, client, the more you want to um, increase your pricing as you go forward. Okay, now we're going to look at fee progression strategies. This really depends on what phase you are in your business. And this will help you understand when is the best time to start with value-based fees and pricing. So if you're entry level at the beginning, and if for those of you it's been a while, chances are families and friends, that's where your business was coming from. You accept any business that came your way. Um, your fee was pretty determined by maybe what the client was willing to pay. And it was probably at the lower end because you're trying to bring client in, clients in. And it was probably slim or in a, a very low profit margin. Next, you became a going concern. Now you got, you got, you're getting your referrals in, your marketing to bring people in. Um, you're still accepting most business comes your way, but you're planning to cut some out on that, that fall off in that lower profitability area. Um, your fee may be a little flexible now, um, but your levels, ten, your fees tend to probably be a little below average or just at average for your industry, for your market, and you're, you are um, coming somewhat profitable, maybe an average for your industry. The next level will be when you get to the point where your new business comes from re referrals and marketing, and you have a strong um, feeder uh, program into new clients. Um, your, the business you take on needs to be that high margin with strong potential for referral. Um, so you can be more selective. Um, the, now you're starting to have your fees are determined by value pay, based pricing and it's firm. So now you're going, hey, hey, dog groomer, my bookkeeping services are this. And you know that you're charging based on what that dog groomer, that kind of value they have in their mind of, oh, I can groom eight more client, more pets each month. That gives me that much more revenue. Now I can understand the value of that bookkeeping service. And as a bookkeeper, that is what you are going to base your pricing on. Your, and you can be more, you can be firm with that. Um, and now as far as the demands at a premium are now you're at a premium level for what you're charging and you're above average, uh, and your profit margins. The next level is when your business, be, you become a brand. It's all referrals. You have you developed your name in the market. When someone lo is looking for your service, they, you know, that is, they think of you. Um, so now you can be very selective and align your business, qualifying business with your strategies, taking on the clients that are the fit for you. Um, you can maximize your profitability or margins in every with every client. Your value is pricing is based on value based pricing, what the value is to the customer. And now you're far above average in your pricing fees and you are firm with those and your your margins are very strong and you're near the top of your industry. And then where we all love to get to is the ultimate. You have key buyers and clients that seek you out. And um, marketing is there just to keep brand awareness, but people are seeking you out for your product or for should, I should say for your service. You select only those of interest. You only take on new clients that you're interested in taking on. Um, fee is not integrated, not even discussed at this point. They want you. You tell them their fee is just, this is what it is. Um, and then you are, your um, fees are at the very highest level and your margins are extraordinary. And that's the free progression strategy. So understanding where you fit helps you understand when can you be successful when bringing on new clients with value-based fees and pricing. 
So before we move forward, it's just really understand that under, the better you understand your client, the more that you understand what the value is to them. And you can, you can put a dollar amount on that. So you know what the value is of what it costs to, um, to have to keep hiring new clients, what it costs to have more service, have better technology so that you can provide more, your um, outside service staff can go out there and service more HVAC clients, understanding how, what the value is in that service to the client in that dollar, and you can transfer that into a dollar amount, that's the way that you can start to bring new clients in and make sure that you take all the steps that are needed. You really need to establish yourself as the, as the expert, be able to differentiate yourself and truly market yourself as the expert and the reason why they should choose you over the alternative. So now we're gonna talk about how to package your service. So you all know this, services are different. So because it's intangible and they can't necessarily see it or touch it or feel it, it really, need, you need to understand that you have, if you're gonna package them, you have to, again, we're gonna always focus on what's in it for the customer, what you're delivering to the customer. It's really, under, you need to understand how to package a service so it's easy for a customer to purchase it. So when you think about this as a consultant or as a service provider, um, these are some of the things that you know, you're up against. First of all, people don't understand why they need your expertise. So you need to be able to under, explain why they should hire you instead of doing something themselves. They don't, you may, you don't know how to value it. And we've just talked about it. How do I value what I do for my customer? How do I put a value to that? Um, people need expertise um, they, when they don't know how to do something. So this is an, and so maybe you're going to have to um, demonstrate to them um, a little demo, some you know, and it's it's okay to give away a little bit of your secret sauce, a little a little knowledge, so that you're it shows that you're going to be you're qualifying yourself as the expert and giving them a little peek behind the camera, behind the or should say behind the uh, screen, so they get an idea of oh yeah wow that's how they do what they do and boy they're really good at it, and sometimes they think that they um, don't have time to do something or it's not necessary. So really what you want to do is um, you need to be able to um, really show how exceptional you are and what happens if they do not go ahead with um, this, you know, this purchasing this service. So as, so when we think about packaging your services think of there are two ways to look at it but it really is very much aligned with value-based pricing so when you package a service this is where you're not selling the hours you combine services that are logical you are really selling the outcome and everything they need is in that package so i think about when i was if i'm going to have a kitchen remodel I know what it is that I want and the outcome. I need to know that when I hire you to do this, that you are going to deliver my kitchen remodel on time and on budget and, and with all of the appliances and finishes and everything that I'm looking for. And so when I'm doing that, I don't wanna be surprised. I want to buy that kitchen remodel. That is, you give me the, the, I give you the project, you deliver based on what we have agreed upon. And I don't want you to say, oh, but if you, you, 
you know, this is an add-on and this is an add-on and costs keep going up. So it's really all about when it says flat pricing is you are the expert. You are telling me, the consumer, this is what you're looking for. This is what, this is a complete service package and I'm going to deliver this complete service to you. And so that is, makes it easy for someone to buy because they're relying on you as the expert. I just want the outcome. You, the expert, tell me, hey, what's that package? What do I need to purchase in order for that remodel to happen? And you're gonna, that's what your expertise is going to guide me to the answer that I need. So you may have something that you have already created where there's very limited customization. So maybe it's a marketable book, it's an ebook, it's a training program, it's material that you've already created and, and it can be used over and over again. So it's more like a product and you sell it to many and there really are very few customizations. So it's something that's prepackaged, ready to go, again, everything they need and you can make it, it turns into a product that is not custom, that you're not customizing which makes it easy when you're trying to sell the same things to many people. So either you're going to have a package, which is customizable, has greater perceived value, you're guiding the customer to what they need, you're putting all those services together so that it provides the outcome that they want, or you've got something that you've produced and you can sell this over and over and over again to many people and really not maybe just update and touch it as you need. So there are two ways to think about packaging your service. And so, so why do you want to do this? Well, number one is if we, we want to avoid selling hours and think of it this way. If I am a consumer and I'm paying you by the hour, what's first most, what's first most in my mind is every hour that you're working, I'm paying. The longer it takes, the more money I spend. So you want to avoid that. You people like things that are turnkey, that are tidy and solution, that are solutions. And it makes it easy. It's easier to be able to describe something, the benefits of something when you're thinking about a prod, a service as a product. It's easier to explain because you're talking about the outcome. It's easier to sell. You tend to, you can, um, if it's something where it becomes um, something you're selling over and over and over again, it can be a very efficient way to sell a service or because you're just offering it the training program, which is prepackaged over and over and over again. So it can be very profitable for you, but it's really so that you're, you and your consumer are on the same page. It's easy for them to buy. And those are all reasons why you want to package your service. So what are the principles of packaging your service? You wanna focus on the outcome, results and deliverables, very much aligned with value-based pricing. You wanna document the value proposition. You wanna document what that value is to the customer. You either, either use a flat or fixed fee pricing for primary packages, and then you can use accessories or add-ons for variables. And we're going to talk about um, filling the shelf in just a little bit. So if you're doing that, you can go ahead, you can have a primary package where they know exactly what they're getting. And then you're going to have the add-ons, but they know they're add-ons already. This is a primary. These are add-ons. You're not, you're not surprising them. They're just, it's just a way for you to help package and promote. Um, those primary packages are also a great way to Get, get your foot in the door with someone to be the first time that they, they work with you. And then um, be crystal clear which activities occur during the engagement, identify key milestones and deliverables. So be very, very clear as to what they're getting, what the timeline is for delivery, all of those things. So they know exactly what they're getting, when it's happening, when the, what the outcome will be. And the, Again, this is all towards transparency, but also it increases client satisfaction. Specify what you expect from the customer. So, you know, what, who will participate, uh, type of activity. So maybe it's something where you're going to have to do an evaluation of a, of a customer service department. So let them know who's going to have to be, what you're going to have to do, how, who's going to, who you're going to have to interview. Uh, is there going to be a survey? Um, 
if it's something that you're, it's a service that's going to be in the home, how long is it going to take? Will someone have to be present? Um, is it you? Is it where your service where you pick up the equipment or whatever it is you're working on, take it to your location and then return it? Again, what that's going to be very specific. And then you want to build support documentation means, are there checklists? Are there guides? Are there all the ways that you are going to give visibility to the customer as to what you're doing, what they're purchasing, how what the timeline is for delivery, um, what the outcomes are. So those are all ways that, again, increase client satisfaction. So they truly understand, again, everything is in the package. They've got it. The only add-ons are going to be is if you specify, this is the package, these are the add-ons. And the more you can communicate that, it, it leads to more successful packaging of product of, of your services. And so offer the solution for the problem or the need. So, and these are just three different types of services. You can think of it this way. Um, if it's remodeling, I already talked about that kitchen remodel. So what do people fear? I'm afraid it's gonna cost, it's gonna take too long, it's gonna cost too much, it's gonna have overruns. I'm so. I'm going to sell a kitchen remodeling system. So it's, you know, all those fears are taken away. And a hair salon, you know, hey, I'm getting married and I want to look fantastic. Well, um, I would rather just go in and say, hey, this is a wedding day miracle makeover where we're going to do hair, nails for you, the, you know, your bridal party, whatever that looks like again. So it's, it's really saying, hey, right to be, I'm going to take all that stress of your wedding day off as far as getting yourself prepared. I'm going to pamper you, you, your wedding party, and you're just going to love the day because it's all about you. And then for computer, maybe you offer computer programming services and people can be very confused by computer programming, you know, their new laptop, their new device. Um, and so you're going to be a coach and maybe you focus on working with, you know, seniors who you know, are, are maybe not, you know, as uh, tech savvy or um, so you really want to make sure that you're that coach. You're going to guide them and take away all the stress of, oh, I got a new laptop. Now I'm going to transfer all this, everything from my old laptop, make sure I have all the programs installed. You're taking away all of that stress by providing that. So it's really about perfect coaching, a blend of training and programming and making sure they understand and get the most out of their devices, their computer device, their laptops. So when we talk about a product, this is the type of thing where you can generally see there are subscriptions for it. So you've got something that is marketable and saleable that you created. Um, and I like to give an example of a training program and you can sell it over and over and over again. You don't have to customize it or very limit, limited customization. And maybe you can sell it as a, an annual subscription or a monthly subscription. So that's when we're taking about the, not that highly specialized, but that very transferable product that you can market and sell to many people over and over and over again. And those annual subscriptions and or the monthly subscriptions are a great way to have, you know, have increased revenue streams as well. And then we wanna talk about filling the shelf. When filling the shelf, what we really mean is there are times that you have customers um, that you need to introduce them to something, or maybe they just need a lower level of their service. That's all they need. And then you may have the clients who are on the upper end who are needing full customizations. They want the, the best possible service. They want, you know, they share, no, spare no expense. And so if you're looking at this by filling the shelf, having different packages that appeal to different people, especially if you have a service that is people are price sensitive to, then you are able to not turn anyone away. You're able to meet that customer where they are and what their needs are. And that doesn't mean that you're underselling the value of your, of your service, because we're talking about value-based ba pricing. It just means that you have, uh, you're offering a product package of your service that fits the different needs of your potential customers. 
And it does also give you the opportunity to upsell as well, which is wonderful. So we can, hey, if you're interested in this, let me tell you more about this package as well. So um, as you go down this road of product packaging and value-based pricing, from what we've discussed, you understand, truly understanding you, your value, your value to your customer, how that translates into a fee that you can charge, which is commensurate with the value to the customer, not based on the cost of, of your service delivery. The more you can take the conversation away from hours and price per hour that they're being charged and all on what the value is to them, the more you can grow your business and satisfy your customer. The more you can take away the stress of, I don't know how to decide what I need for this service by packaging your product, your service as a product. That's another way that you could just make it easier to solve the problem or fill the need for your customer and help them make a decision. So, so thank you for joining me today. Um, I invite you to visit the Business Impact Northwest virtual um, biz fair booth, um, where we have information on our various programs. As I mentioned, Business Impact Northwest is a nonprofit um, CDFI. We offer coaching classes and access to capital. Um, you can visit our website at businessimpactnw.org. Our phone number is 206-334-4330. And um, we have this various business um, centers, the Washington Women's Business Center, Veterans Business Outreach Center, Food Business Resource Center, Alaska Women's Business Center, Loan Readiness Center, and Small Business Lending. So if you go to our website, you'll be able to access all of these. We do have the email addresses for each of those particular centers available, or if you want more information on lending. Um, our business coaching is always free of charge. Um, the majority of our classes are at no cost, and we do have um, scholarships available um, based on need. And so uh, thank you so much again for joining us. I look forward to seeing you at a future class. And please, um, please check out our website. Stop by the Biz Fair booth if you have any questions, and enjoy Washington Biz Fair. Mm -hmm.